uh, the ability through your word and through your love and through your power to overcome in the name of Jesus. And we give you all the praise for what is going to come forth tonight in Jesus' precious name. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Well, Brother Fred. Okay. The title of the message tonight is Living Faith Works Under Pressure. Living faith. Uh, it's important for us to know that our faith is alive. You, God has given each of us a measure of faith, but what have we done with it? That's the critical question. What are we doing uh, with our faith? He expects us to steward our faith and to let it grow stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll talk about how, how do you measure what's going on with your faith? How, how strong is it? And uh, so this is an important message for all of us. And uh, it, it came to my thoughts uh, Friday night when... Uh, uh, they called us about our grandson and they had carried him to the emergency room and uh, for a broken foot and uh, something inside of me. It was my faith. It rose up and said, his foot is not broken. Oh, yeah. uh, I hadn't seen his foot. I hadn't seen the x-rays. But at that moment, see, that's when faith arose mm -hmm. in me and I could speak out that his foot was not broken. Uh, we put him on the phone and we said, your foot is not broken. And so his response was, well, do you want me to agree with that? We <laughs> said, yes, certainly. Your foot is not broken. Well, that was Friday night. Well, we had uh, dinner with him last mm -hmm. night. He's walking along. Hallelujah. Uh, he, he injured his foot, but it's not broken. It's not broken. See, faith <laughs> overcomes the world. It, it overcomes what the world wants to throw at you over your loved ones and over other people. And uh, we've got to have that faith alive inside of us that tells us uh, what is really going on. We cannot depend on the world. The world is gonna give us a bad report. Amen. And if you want, <laughs> if you want to uh, <clears throat> operate by faith, you've got to go by what's inside of you, not by what the world is telling you. You know, in Isaiah 53, it says, whose report are you going to believe? Well, you better believe the report of the Lord. Now, that's the only one we can count on, the report of whose the Lord. Whose report are you going to believe? I believe the report of the Lord. Whose report are you going to believe? I believe the report of the Lord. His you. report says I am healed. His report says I am blessed. His report says I am good. I believe the report of the Lord. <laughs> that was good, Sherry. Amen. <laughs> the report of the Lord. The report Definitely of the Lord. Believe the report of the Lord. Uh, when the world uh, gives you a report, you've got just that moment. Uh, to make a decision. Am I going to believe that report of the world or am I going to believe the report of the Lord and declare it out? Amen. That's Amen. living faith. Amen. And, and I know that within me and within Sherry and within each of us, there's living faith. It's been deposited there by the Lord himself. Uh, he has given us a measure of faith and we'll look at uh, some verses in a moment, but I just want to talk uh, as an introduction to this. And what do I mean by living faith? Well, it's active, it's growing, and it's fruitful. Hallelujah. So it's going to do something. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's going to grow over time. And if you say, well, my faith, I have faith, uh, but I don't do anything with it, um, that's not active faith. That's and right. uh, if you're not pursuing the growth of your faith, it's not growing because God gives us faith, but then we are responsible for what happens with it. Amen. Uh, we are responsible for the process of letting our faith grow, of growing our faith. So again, what I mean by living faith, it's active, it's growing, and it's fruitful. And that's the way we receive the promises of God. 
uh, with uh, uh, with living faith. And uh, any other kind of faith is not going to receive the promises of God. Uh, he wants us to operate in faith. And uh, without faith, it's impossible to please him, mm -hmm. but it has to be living faith because dead faith, and there is a dead faith, incidentally. Mm -hmm. We'll look at the scripture in a moment, but there is a living faith and there is a dead faith. Now, when God gave you faith, he gave you a living faith, but what have you done with it? Uh, we are stewards of our own faith, and he's mm -hmm. not hes not uh, watching over the process of progression uh, to make it happen, uh, make it go in one direction or another. You're responsible. Each of us is responsible for what we do with that measure of faith uh, that he gives us. And um, there was a famous preacher, his name was Smith, Wigglesworth, mm -hmm. and he said, great faith comes out of great fights. And so if you fight, mm -hmm. uh, if you fight the good fight of faith, see your faith will grow. It comes out of that. Now, let me say this, that God does not uh, bring evil upon his people in order to accomplish good in their lives. Uh, for example, he doesn't make you sick. He doesn't give you sickness or disease uh, to teach you something. The, God uses his word and his spirit uh, and, and the ministry gifts to teach us. He doesn't use uh, evil to teach us. So God does not bring evil upon his people in order to accomplish good in their lives. But when evil comes, what are you going to do with it? And so life circumstances, see, if you have living faith, you will see life circumstances as a training ground uh, for mm -hmm. your faith. Mm -hmm. And that will make you an overcomer. Uh, see, if you are a warrior, you're going to be fighting. When adversity oh, yeah. comes, you're going to be fight, fighting. Fight, fight. The thing about a warrior, they're looking for a fight. Uh, like, there's a lot of people that will fight if they're pressed into a corner and they have to fight, but a warrior uh, mm -hmm. he is prepared and the, a warrior is looking for a fight. And uh, we need to be warriors uh, and that way when the, when the enemy comes against us, we can overcome and learn how to overcome and to apply our faith. And so this study tonight is about how to operate in living faith. And I've uh, just briefly explained to you what it is, but let's look at a, a few verses. And I'm going to ask uh, Sherry to look at uh, this first one is in Romans 12, three. And that says we all start, uh, all of us that have accepted Jesus Christ have uh, start with a measure of faith. So let's read this verse. Okay, Romans 12, 3. For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you. Okay, so he's not saying to the world. So this is a this is a statement he's making to everyone among you. So these are the Christians. So he's speaking mm -hmm. to Christians, to everyone among you. All the, So he's speaking to the Christians among us. And this is what he's saying. That you think that you you not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment as God has allotted to each one of us a measure of faith. Okay. It's not the measure. See, if, if that word had been the measure of faith, that would have meant that everybody had a fixed amount and they couldn't increase or decrease that amount. But it says a measure of faith. And so that means that uh, you're, you're mm -hmm. given mm -hmm. some faith, but then you can increase it or you can let it die. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, good, good. but we don't want to let it die. And so we're going to be talking about tonight. How, how do we let it live? Grow? How yeah. do we let it live and grow? <laughs> and, and I like this concept of living faith. That means there's something in there. And, and that's what I experienced Friday. There's something living inside of me and it's living faith. And, and I'm praying that living faith is inside of every one of us. And we need to know that it's there and what to do about it. Okay. Amen. 
Uh, I'm going to read the next yeah, one. Yeah, read, read it first. This is Matthew's. about living faith. This is uh, a description of living faith. It gives us an idea about living faith. Matthew 17, 20. And this is from the Amplified Bible. If you have living faith, the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there. And if it is God's will, it will move and nothing will be impossible to you. Okay. So it's living faith and it's like a seed, a seed. Now, maybe a small seed or a big seed, mm -hmm. but it's a seed. Inside that seed, there is life. Oh, glory to God. Well, that's where, that's where the life is. It's in, it's the, in seed. the seed. It's in the seed. The, it, so that's, that's why what, I don't eat any watermelons that do not have seeds in them. So life is in the seed here. We need to realize that our faith, for it to be living, it needs to be like a seed. Hallelujah. Now, I, I, I heard this story uh, a few years ago about a building they uh, tore down in uh, Europe and it had that building had existed for hundreds of years. And when they tore the building down and removed it, they found some seed underneath that building and they planted the seed and they sprouted. It had that much life in them. They could sit there. And so we don't want our seed to be like that. Uh, those seeds under that building uh, where they'd never received the moisture and the pro and the proper temperature and sunlight because it takes some ingredients then for that seed to be mm, put mm, in the mm. uh, earth and for it to come forth. Mm, but there's life good. in the seed and there's life. In. And that's what he's saying here, that there's living faith and it's in, it's like a seed, uh, but the seed can't just sit there. I mean, you could go look at, you could put it on your table and just keep looking at that seed, seed. Uh, and it's got life in it, but it's not going to do anything until you put it in the ground, until you start putting nutrients on it and, and the warm temperature and the sunlight on it, and then it's going to grow. So it's got, the seed has life in it. And this is living faith and it has life in it, but it's got to be put into a situation where it can grow. Hallelujah. It's got to have the right atmosphere and the right environment and the right, and the right uh, nurture, nurturing and nutrients and all of that for it to grow, but it's in the seed. And that's what faith is. It's, it said it's a seed and Jesus said, you can talk to this mountain. You can speak to this mountain. Mm -hmm. If you have this living faith that I'm talking about and the mountain will move, it'll, it'll be here, but then it'll go over there. If you tell it to go over there, if your faith is alive, if you have living faith mm -hmm. it, and you speak to a mountain, it will be mm -hmm. Move. Oh, 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 this is an exciting message. Yes, it is. And we can't. all need to know this, that our faith that God gave us, oh, hallelujah, it was enough faith for us to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. But what are we going to do with it beyond that? You know, I was, uh, I was saved when I was 13 years of age. And uh, Sherry was saved when she was nine years mm -hmm. of age. Mm -hmm. Well, what have we done with it since then? Uh, we had the measure of faith to be saved, but we've got to plant that seed of faith and let it grow. And, and then it becomes a big tree and a lot of things happen. Hallelujah. Uh, under Hallelujah. That. But so there is a living faith and that's exciting. And it operates like a seed. And But there's also a dead faith. And so we need to look at both sides of it because we need to examine ourselves. Is our faith alive or is it dead? So let's read James chapter 2. James 2, 26. For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Faith wow. without works is dead. So there's dead. a living faith. And there's a dead faith. Mm, mm, How do you examine mm. your faith? When you look at your faith, is wow. it alive or is it dead? Mm, oh, we, mm. we are responsible for our own faith. God is not going to 
uh, blow on our faith and make it uh, alive because when he handed it to mm -hmm. you, when he put it in you, it was alive. I mean, what have you done with it? That's the important Ooh, question that we're hallelujah. looking at tonight. Mm. Now, let me say that we can go from faith to faith. So this is an important concept. We don't have to stay where we are. See, a lot of people are satisfied where they are. They received enough faith to be born again, to receive Jesus as his, as their Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. but they don't do anything with it beyond that. But we're going to be talking about what do we do beyond that? Because living faith works even under pressure. You can mm -hmm. receive mm -hmm. from God even under pressure. Oh, now I will give the testimony. Okay. okay. I want to give a testimony here of our daughter, Amy Elizabeth. There's been some situations that she has she has had to uh, deal with and fight with and let her faith arise uh, in several areas. One is her vehicle, um, and another one is uh, part of their house. They're remodeling, and some things have not been going uh, very well there. She said she was out mowing the grass yesterday, and the Lord spoke to her. And he asked her a question. He said, who do you say that I am? And Amy Elizabeth spoke back to the Lord and said, you are my provider. And the Lord says, then I will make provision for everything. And so she said that her faith rose up in her. And, and there were some people that she told the testimony to and they said oh well you just you need to have a reality check and she said her reality check was that she trusted the lord Hallelujah! and that was her reality check Hallelujah. and that's what she told the people um that were you know coming against that uh that faith and she said i trust in my god Hallelujah! and she said my god is bigger than my car problems and my God is bigger than this situation with the house. And, and she knows that she knows that. And, and so she's, she's, she's let her faith rise her, up, rise up. And she is claiming uh, the things that yeah. God has put in her heart. That's right. Uh, that That's her, right. her car is going to be fixed economically. Her, uh, all of the, um, uh, Things uh, in the house. Yeah. Materials needed for the house are going to be there when they're needed. Uh, there's a lot. She's come against a lot of opposition, but she's put her faith out there. See, that's where the pressure is. The mm -hmm. pressure uh, is wanting you to just stop and uh, accept whatever the, comes your way and whatever the world uh, throws at you. Mm -hmm. But that's not what God wants. God right. is our provider. Oh, and, and we've got to let that faith arise and see when he when he spoke to her on the she is mowing grass and when he spoke to her he said who do you say that i am see uh jesus asked that same question to peter who do you say i am mm -hmm. and uh who, first of all he said oh who do the people say i am and some say well you're you're this prophet or that prophet and and then he got real specific and said who do you, you say, say that I am. what kind of faith is going to come out of your work out of your mouth and so he's saying the same thing to each of us who do you say mm -hmm. oh, that i am hallelujah who do you, who are you saying jesus is hallelujah. and when, when when the world says well uh you're there's going to be delays and you're not going to have the money and all of this well, who do you say that the lord is mm -hmm. hallelujah you need Praise to make God. some uh declarations of faith in yes. faith amen hallelujah amen. and so we can grow in faith and so have we read uh romans uh uh there romans 127 117. 117 romans romans 117 says for in the gospel the righteous of righteousness of god is revealed both springing forth faith and leading to faith oh okay mm. so faith comes here and then it goes on to more faith springs mm -hmm. up, springs up and then it goes on to more faith disclosed in a way that awakens more faith more faith awakens more mm -hmm. faith. see this is the idea here it's a faith your faith is alive and and it springs up and it goes to more faith and more faith and more faith 
as it is written and forever remains written, the just and the upright shall live by faith. Okay. You are the just. Hallelujah. You are, because you are, you have been justified by the blood of Jesus. And so you are mm -hmm. the just and you live by faith. We don't Hallelujah. live by the reports of the doctors. We don't live by the mm -hmm. reports of the world. We live by the faith of God Hallelujah. and we live and we believe the report of the Lord. And we're growing and moving from faith to faith. faith. faith so, to faith. so it's not about a set level of faith, but we can grow in faith. And I want to give a couple of examples from the Bible of people who grew in faith. And the first one is Abraham. Mm -hmm. And Abraham is the father of our faith. Yes. And so he's the one that sets the pattern for your faith. He's your father of faith. Glory to God. Read in Romans book. 4, 19 through 21, without becoming weak in faith, he, contempla he contemplated or thought his own body, now as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Okay, so let me just mm. explain the situation here. See, Abraham has been promised a child, but now he's a hundred years old. Sarah's about 90 years old. There's no way in the natural they're going to have a child mm -hmm. now. Oh, but, but see, Abraham did realize what mm. their bodies, what kind of shape their bodies were in, but that's not where he put his attention. His attention oh, wow. was on what God had spoken to him. And what God could do. And what God can do. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Okay. So, right, you know, I love this little chorus. It's, My God can do anything, anything, anything. My God can do anything. He made the yeah. earth. And, and all, all the stars. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Uh, uh, he can do anything. anything. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Verse 20. Okay. Yet with respect to the promise of God, he did not waver in unbelief, but grew stronger in faith. Woo, let's go over that phrase. Hallelujah. He grew stronger in, in faith. faith. Oh, but this is how he grew, giving glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. I give you glory for my Hallelujah. healing, Lord. Hallelujah. I give you glory in Jesus' name that you're my provider. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! So here he is. God has promised him a child and promised Sarah a child. And it's going to be between him and Sarah. It's not going to be with a handmaiden. It's going to be between mm -hmm. with Abraham and Sarah. And God promised them. So Abraham is not going to be restrained, restricted or restrained by the deadness of their bodies. Mm, that's right. Verse he, 21. Okay. He is looking at the promises Amen. of God. I read this. Verse 21. And being fully assured. And I also like being fully persuaded that what God had promised he was able also to perform. Okay. Hallelujah so, to Jesus. So here Abraham is. He, and there's two things to consider. You've got what you see with your eyes, the deadness of their bodies, mm -hmm. and you've got the promises of God. He, he, he looked at the two and he put down the the, <laughs> the deadness of their bodies and he held up mm -hmm. the promises of God. And he mm -hmm. was fully uh, uh, certain and fully, fully persuaded. persuaded that God was able to do what mm, he had promised. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. That is the father of our faith. He mm, set the pattern. Mm, mm, he set the pattern. He's a hundred years old and, and he's going to receive uh, in a year of the promise of a son. Hallelujah. Because he was fully mm -hmm. persuaded. Are you fully, fully persuaded, persuaded that what God has promised you, you mm -hmm. can receive? And if you have living faith, you can do it. Well, it's not just Abraham. He's not the only one. Look at what Paul wrote about the Thessalonians in 2 Thessalonians 1. 2 Thessalonians 1, 3. We ought always to give thanks to God 
for you, brothers and sisters, as it is only fitting because your faith is increasing abundantly. Yeah. And the love of each and every one of you toward one another grows stronger and greater. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. You've got two things going on here. You've got the love. It's growing stronger and greater. And, and you've got the uh, you've got faith and it's mm. growing stronger and greater and abundantly, abundantly. Now, it's important because these two things work together. Because remember, Galatians 5, 6 said, our faith is energized Just by, by our love. love. And so if you don't have love, your faith's not going to work anyway. So Amen. you have to have both of them. Both in order for you to have growing faith, you have to also have growing love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, now you Hallelujah. can't just sit at home and, and say, Oh, I love, love, love people. I mean, you've got to be out there doing something. Mm -hmm. You've got to mm -hmm. be out there loving some people. And that's what faith is about. It's about doing something, being active. Uh, otherwise, it said faith is dead. If there's no works, yeah. if you're not yeah. doing anything, uh, not only is your love not growing, but your faith is not growing. So you've got to be doing something. You've got to be out there uh, contacting somebody, doing something uh, in order for your faith not to die, uh, to shrivel up and die. Mm, mm, well, it's important. Mm, mm. Uh, let's just think about these concepts yes. uh, for a moment. We, we want our faith to grow, and, and it's like a seed. And so we have to be doing something with it in order for it to grow. And a lot of people say, oh, I have faith, I have faith, I have faith. But if you're not doing anything with it, it's going to stagnate. It becomes mm -hmm. stagnant. Mm -hmm. And, and and it's like a, a pool of water um, mm. that just doesn't do anything. But uh, but living faith, see, is active. It's moving. And, and I want to just give you uh, some words about the evidence of living faith. If you have if you have these things, uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about seven. I believe. First of all living faith and this is all evidence that you have living faith it hears the living word see it, it mm, hears mm -hmm. what god is saying it's not just about the written word it's about the see there's a logos and that's the written word that's that's the full body of the word but there's the rhema word and that's mm. the living word that's the word that's the word that comes up alive to you you know uh, hebrews 4:12 said that uh, the word is active, it's living, it's mm, alive. alive. And, and we need to be hearing the word that's alive. What is the Lord saying to us? So the number one evidence that you have living faith is that you're hearing the living word, not just reading not a, a study, dead letter. The dead letter. You know, it, it talks about there's a letter that kills. The dead letter of the mm -hmm. word, it kills. But the, where the spirit, spirit of, is, yes. there is life and freedom. Mm -hmm. and, and so the living word then is associated with the Holy Spirit. Uh, so first of all, uh, living faith hears the living word. Mm -hmm. Second, living faith obeys the living word. So when you, we hear the voice of the Lord, we respond and obey uh, what what we hear the spirit saying to us and thirdly the living faith speaks mm, mm. speaks what's heard in the heart yes. because comes out, out of, of our mouth out of the mouth oh glory to god comes that uh, out of the heart the mouth, mouth speaks. speaks out of the heart the mouth speaks and mm. so we speak what we're hearing in our heart and that's the living that's the living Oh, glory to God. Living faith. The living faith. And, and here we go to number four, and this is activate the gifts. See, mm. the living faith activates the gifts. And so uh, Friday, for example, just use this as an example, that uh, when they called and said that my grandson's foot was broken and my spirit, the flesh, 
the, I mean, the faith within me, the living faith rose up, said it's not. So I had the discerning, uh, I had the discerning, uh, the gift of discerning of spirits, and I knew the foot was not broken, and the word of knowledge, and the word of knowledge, it was not broken. Oh, glory. That, so that's mm -hmm. the gifts being activated. That's the gifts being activated. And I could speak out. It's not it's not broken. A and then when my grandson said, well, do I need to agree with you? And I said, we said, yes, certainly. You need to agree with us. The foot's not broken. Last night we met with him. The foot's not broken. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. Now we're down to number five. And number five is the living faith stands against adversity. See, adversity is going to come, but do you stand mm -hmm, against it? Mm -hmm. And I, I said earlier that if you've got living faith, you will address the life circumstances uh, as a training ground. Oh, yeah. this is a place where I, I'm going to overcome this. I'm not going to let this thing that the world is throwing at me, that the devil is throwing at me, I'm not going to let it overcome me, but I'm going to overcome it because I'm a mm -hmm. warrior mm -hmm. looking for a fight, and I'm going to come out of this victorious because Jesus has given me the victory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah. Now we're down to number six. Number six is living faith grows. We saw it with Abraham. It grows. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Mm. And now we're down to the seventh uh, evidence of living faith. And that is you're looking for assignments. Embrace wow. it. Embrace hallelujah. it new assignments from the Lord. Mm, now, I'm mm -hmm. not talking about from your boss or from the world. I'm talking about from, from the Lord. Amen. Now, let's just look at this for a moment and to see whether or not your faith is growing. A and one way to look at it is who are you being assigned to pray for? Are you, mm -hmm. uh, are you still just praying for yourself mm -hmm. or, or maybe you branched out and began to pray for your family, maybe you're praying for yourself and your family, but over time you need to to be moving in a higher and higher realm. Maybe you need to be praying for other people. Maybe you need to be out there ministering to people, mm -hmm. ministering to groups of people. You know, it's uh, it's a higher uh, level if you're, let's say, teaching in in your congregation. Well, that's more than just sitting back and just praying for yourself or praying for uh, your family, mm -hmm. uh, if you're out teaching to a group of people. And so going to higher and higher levels, ministering to more, more and more people, um, mm -hmm. praying for a bigger region. And let's just look at Cherry for a moment. Uh, uh, she prayed for nine years for the continent, for people on the continent of Africa, nine years before she ever went to Africa. And then she went to Africa and ministered in Africa. Now, who are you praying for now, Sherry? Well, I'm praying for uh the these five countries in the middle east iraq iran uh turkey syria and saudi arabia okay. and i pray for them every single day and those strongholds are coming down in the name of jesus i pray for china i pray for comfort and hope to come to china i pray that they will know the season and that they will uh, enter into the harvest of the lord and I've also uh, asked the Lord to, uh, to be their provider, to make provision for believers, especially believers in the, in the, uh, the country of China, uh, that they will have whatever they need to work in the kingdom of God and function um, in, in, in this life. See, what we're doing today is measuring our faith. Where is our faith. How has it progressed over time? We are responsible for the progression of our faith. And mm. what I want you to see from what Sherry uh, prays is that she has received more and more assignments. If you're faithful in a little, God gives you more. Mm, okay. So not only uh, do we pray for nations, uh, but uh, it's like we have a crisis uh, control uh, center here right, in, right. in our lives. People are constantly uh, contacting us about 
prayer request mm -hmm. and, and issues. And I give you this as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, about 10 days ago, there was uh, some business owners uh, who live uh, a thousand miles away from here, a thousand miles away from mm -hmm. here. A and uh, they were having a crisis in their business. And their business manager said, well, you better contact your people. <laughs> And, and they didn't, he didn't, the business manager Contact your people. didn't even know who they were talking to, who, the, <laughs> who our names were, but they called Sherry and me and told us about the crisis that their business was in uh, and asked us for prayer. And so we prayed that our, our lives are a crisis, crisis center, center <laughs> crisis control center crisis controls it. Hallelujah. See, see, we've started in little things. We're faithful in little things. We begin to uh, uh, receive bigger and bigger assignments. We're looking for bigger assignments. We want bigger assignments. Sherry and I have traveled all over the world. We've been in uh, capital cities of many, many different nations mm -hmm. and prayed for those. God has sent us there uh, to pray for them. I prayed uh, Tokyo, Japan and uh, Beijing, China and uh, we prayed Shanghai. for Mid, uh, Madrid, uh, Spain, and London, England, and Havana, Cuba, uh, Havana, Cuba, and Buenos Aires, Argentina, and uh, Colombia, South South uh, America, uh, 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 Bo Bo Bolivia. No, I mean, uh, what uh, is the name? Bo it's a, the capital of uh, Bogota. Uh, Bogota. Yeah, and it was a bow word. I couldn't think. Bogota, Colombia, Mexico City, and more and more and more because see. You're faithful in little assignments. God gives you more assignments. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, we were called yesterday, wanted us to, to go to Peru mm -hmm. to uh, uh, teach uh, uh, ministers, to have a school for ministers. Uh, so where is your faith? Is it growing a little by little, or is it the same as when you first believed? See, your faith needs oh, to be wow, growing. Wow. And the evidence that your faith is mm -hmm. growing. See, you're accepting bigger and bigger assignments. Glory to God. We, we need to be about the Father's There's business. business. That's what Jesus, he was about the Father's business. Mm -hmm. And our faith needs to be alive alive and it's active and, and we can start with the seed so wherever you start go ahead and get it started put it in the ground get get it moving get that seed growing and growing because it is active it's growing and it will be fruitful it will produce fruit and you'll get new assignments when you're faithful in the little things mm. you get bigger and bigger assignments that's the way it works in the kingdom. Amen. Did you know the kingdom is like a seed? Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> it's like a mustard seed. And the kingdom is alive. And, and, and the kingdom is within you. And the kingdom may be small to begin with, but it's alive. We need to be doing something to for the kingdom to be operating and coming forth in our lives. And so we need to be doing something, watching over the progression of our faith and let our faith grow uh, because it will impact more and more lives. Uh, that's the plan that God has. Amen. He's put you here. He's given you that living seed. Mm. And what are you going to do about it? Thank you for being mm. here.